Yeah. So thanks everyone for joining us. Um, we're super excited about this session, um, and it's one of the uh, our sessions that we organize weekly on mental colors so that you can learn about specific topics. Um, so just to give you uh, a bit of a uh, of an overview of what mental color is. So at mental color, what we're looking to do is we want to see more people like ourselves, like uh, people of color in tech. Um, we believe that there could be a lot more of us uh, and we want to provide the opportunity for you to learn from um, experts in the field um, so that you can also get access to um, so some of these opportunities and for some of you transitioning into tech, um, this is also a good opportunity for you to, to, to have a platform like this that supports you. Um, so we have uh, the Mentacola platform where um, we're primarily focusing on connecting you to world-class mentors um, and you can, you can book mentors on the platform, um, over 250 of them as of now. And, um, and our mentors work at um, lots of companies that you're um, familiar with um, and a lot of other global tech companies too. So you can find uh, mentors from different domains. What you can expect is that our mentors can guide you through one-on-one um, um, -on -one and group mentorship sessions. And you do this online, um, so um, through video calls. And you can get support across different topics. So it could be like you're preparing for an interview, you need a mentor, you can get it on Mentor Color. If you want general career advice, you're trying to transition into tech, or you want to change roles within tech, you can also get um, uh, support on that. Um, if you are looking to uh, improve your soft skills and your leadership skills, you can also get mentors uh, on Mentor Color that can actually help you with that. So um, you can get a wide range of support and across the different domains in tech. So from front end, this session is specifically geared towards front end, but if you're interested in back end, in data, in, in machine learning, in product, um, or even in leadership, you can find mentors that can support you on that. Um, and finally, like I said, we have lots of sessions like this one. So. Um, feel free to go on mentorcolor.org and, um, and join any one of these sessions. There's a lot more than, than those that are displayed here. Um, so we have this weekly. So these are things that you can, um, you can constantly like benefit from and continue to grow uh, your career in tech. So that's it. Um, I will stop sharing and hand it over to Raul. Yeah, uh, thank you. So let me share my screen. So hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. Good evening. Uh, I think people must be joining from uh, like across like different uh, time zones. So hi, everyone. So this session uh, uh, is going to be about how to break into front end. And uh, yeah, so uh, first, a little bit about me, myself, Rahul. I am currently working at uh, basically Uber. So I'm working with Uber India as of now. So we will uh, like, I will share something like a little bit brief about me and why is that important uh, that will actually help. I will tell you in coming slides, like why that's important. So like currently <clears throat> I'm working with Uber from last almost two years as a front end engineer too. And previously I have worked with multiple startups in India. So Directa is one of the startups. Then we have Revigo in logistics, HelpShift, a SaaS uh, startup. Then we have Mindtickle, a class plus. So like I did multiple interns in uh, multiple interns also basically. So uh, in startup Mindtickle and class plus I did my interns uh, internship and in the last four years I have worked with multiple companies basically. So like, this is a little bit, little bit brief about me. And now how I can help with, uh, like breaking into front end, right? So, because, uh, so that's, that's why, like, it was important, you know, like where I have worked. Uh, so I have worked because I have worked with multiple startups. So like currently I'm working with a big MNC, like Uber, as you know, it is one of the big MNCs in the world has, uh, you know, like, uh, offices around the world and in terms of like compete with the like top companies like Google, Facebook. So except that I have interviewed with, you know, multiple companies like Google, Facebook, Snapchat, 
uh, like uh, startups in uh, like I have uh, also interviewed with multiple startups across uh, European regions, Amsterdam, Berlin, Hamburg. And yeah, so I have interviewed the Indian startups also basically. So now, yeah, you must be wondering, okay, like, okay, that's good. Like you have done this, but why are you telling us, right? So because of this, basically, so I have gained a lot of exposure, basically, lots of, uh, you know, knowledge, how things works in the front end, how to crack a front end interviews, basically. So that's what I have, uh, like, you know, that's, we will be sharing one of the things in today's session, basically. So, you know, like how to crack interviews. So this is like today's session is also about like how to start front end for beginners also how to advance it, uh, how to get job. And in the last we will be talking about q and basically. So if you have any questions, will we have last 10, 15 minutes for that basically. So yeah, let's start. So first of all, like, I think like, you know, like people might have sometimes confusion actually, like who is a friend in engineer and what it do actually, right? So it's good to get a clarity on it. Like who is a friend in engineer basically, uh, right? Because there are multiple profiles, right? If you go into market today, you will see lots of people profiles are just not with the name of uh, front end engineers. They might be front end engineer, UI engineer, uh, sometimes UI UX engineer, right? JavaScript engineer, React engineer, right? So you will see lots of different profiles basically. Uh, but at the end, you might be doing the same work with all the, like under all the names. So a front end engineer basically, you know, the first thing is they can build UI with HTML, CSS basically. That means that's also the part of the job that they can build. They should be able to build a good UI, good and efficient UI. Definitely they can work with JavaScript and can build uh, JavaScript heavy applications. Can build uh, like a responsive WebEx, which can uh, work across multiple devices. Uh, just to be, uh, okay. So if someone don't know what is responsive, responsive is a single website, which can work across uh, like, a, let's say, print, let's say work on a big screen, uh, you know, like a big monitor of 30 inch or 40 inch, right? I can work on a big 16 inch laptop, 14 inch laptop, 13 inch laptop, can work on your iPads basically, can work on your different mobiles. I mean, we all know how many like different mobiles we have. So it should able to work with all the mobiles basically. Uh, so they, so this is just on the engineering aspect. So it is also expect that you should have a, you know, you can have a good communication skill so that you can do cross team communications. You can lead things in the front end world. Like you must think, okay, uh, what's this? So this is like, basically you can have initiatives basically uh, in the front end, basically uh, like how to, uh, you know, like build something new, basically uh, trying to solve a problem, try to identify a problem in, in your company, in your products basically and leading the effort basically. And uh, yeah, browser knowledge is always important for a front end engineer. And yeah, so backend system, you don't need to know like full in depth, but yeah, you should have a general knowledge uh, so that it helps you in communicating with the backend engineers basically. So, you know, like these are the like, uh, like basically a front end, anything which can do on the front end, basically there's no specifics. Sometimes uh, the engineers, like, you know, front end engineer might be doing JavaScript heavy application. So there's too much JavaScript work and very less on the like building UI. But if you see some of the like, you know, like highly animated, uh, you know, if you see some highly animated, uh, let's say game, web browser games, basically, if you see your anything uh, like, uh, like which has like really good animations on the, like if you have seen the websites, which I have really good animations. So that are like most like, you know, CSS efficient basically. So they are like, it's less JavaScript focus might be more like, you know, you have to work more on CSS. So every expert is expected basically. But uh, yeah, so this is like in general, uh, like what all a friend engineer can do. So definitely, I mean, it's a lots of things, a lots of skills uh, are there as a friend and engineer basically. So uh, now the question comes, how to be a good friend and engineers, good friend and engineer, right? So like when I talking about a good friend and engineers, I mean like, you know, uh, someone who can work with any type of atmosphere, like a work and work with a startup. Uh, can work with a big company, 
or can work with the uh, uh, like uh, i know like a small medium scale company also so like javascript fundamentals that's very important trust me this very important and that's the like uh, one of the uh, like skills which lacks most basically so you know like you always start javascript then you people start like you know get fascinated by frameworks like react view and they directly dive into it but fundamentals they generally lost on the fundamentals and that's where it's important basically that's why you know like if you are like really good in your fundamentals it will be really easy for you so that's why like i have it at most important because it's one of the most important thing so second you should be like you know you can able to build things like html css and using vanilla js basically like you know like because you know like you don't want to like get in the complexity of frameworks every time what if you just want to build a simple page right and like why to use even uh, any framework for it so you can build if you use pure vanilla yeah, like uh, build using this html css and vanilla js it will be more efficient more seo friendly and it's like it will be very fast right nothing extra in it so you should be able to do that and also if you start practicing more in in this you can understand the importance of frameworks why we need it and how to build those design what design patterns you might need then you understand okay how the actually might be any of the frameworks uh, works behind them basically because every framework has a different philosophy and one i think which uh, like might many people ignore or uh, disagree a uh, bit so let's not go into that but problem solving is important and having a basic knowledge of data structure and algorithm is important because many times you need it yes you might not need every time it's not like you said you are doing a very dsl data structure algorithm heavy intensive work it's not about that it's about basically you know like data structures and whenever required you can use them efficiently basically at what time you what structure you want to use and uh, like do you even need it or not need it so uh, you can do those uh, like calculations basically that if you want to use it which one want to use it so this is very important comes in handy so this is just not uh, for the purpose of uh, like to be in our in your like daily or work life this is also related to uh like helps in interviews also so you know like there's always two important things like you might be really good at work but if you can't crack the interview that's also like then you also have to do something about it so yeah and always keep learning learn best practices from best people around the globe you know keep following uh, like the best people around the world for example uh, like if you are react then you can keep checking uh, like following dan abramov uh, can see dots like they have written react and uh, react testing library so you know like they always keep publishing uh, like things about it so it will always help you uh, learn and yeah once you done with like anything basics fundamentals yeah then you can jump to any of the frameworks basically uh which framework it doesn't matter uh, because i feel you should be the person uh, who know you know accept this part in top four if you are good at it you are the fundamentals person who whose fundamentals are clear frameworks uh, you can choose whichever is like uh, currently going in the industry and can required basically so for example i think react is like very high on these days so that will be really uh, beneficial basically but framework you can easily pick it up if your fundamentals are clear okay yeah so now let's say like okay that's good but how to practice javascript so that's i think you know many times people have the question basically you know how to practice javascript i mean like and i think that's everyone uh, face it also uh, you know like okay let's say you go to any website let's say w3 schools have been javascript okay you learn about okay variables you learn about looping classes prototyping prototypical inheritance okay i this this great i mean i learned it how to practice it right that's actually matters right because just reading through it theoretically it's okay but how actually you become like you know really good at it like you become the i feel like you know proficient in that language basically so uh, there can be multiple ways but i suggest uh, like two things here which will solve uh, like two things by doing one thing one uh, you know like if you solve uh, data structure algorithms using javascript you will eventually be using everything basically you will be using your you know 
uh, all the looping variables, all the closure concepts, basically your like maps and everything. So you will become you will be become efficient in using JavaScript. Basically, like you become really good at it. Okay, like how to code in JavaScript. So you at least you know like all the basic things will be really good at it. And also, if you do like more problem solving, so even you can also there are so many concepts because like data structure is a generic thing. It's not a language focused thing, but any data structure can be implemented in any language basically. So in front end we have only one language which is JavaScript. So that's uh, one way to do it. So, but except that also there are other things like classes, basically like classes, productful inheritance that of course you can't uh, do it with data structures, like a little bit, but not that much. So to do it in more practice, basically you can build actually uh, you know, classes and models basically. Uh, for example, you can try to build, uh, uh, let's say library system, basically. Right? I know that's a very cliche, <laughs> like a cliche project, but think about it, like build a library project and in either you will be building multiple classes and inherit, like inheriting classes. So this will actually be a very, very good exercise. You know in very good exercise to practice basically so if you do this basically so these are like you know this is not stop basically data structure is not like you do five ten it will be done so there are like hundreds of problems people actually practice so if you uh like go online read about people so if you sure about lead code so lead code is a platform where people practice uh questions problem solving questions so people before interviews actually do like 500 600 questions right so when you do 500, 600, you eventually be become really good in your, at least your language, basically your language skills will be really good and problem solving definitely will improve a lot, basically. So that's about the practicing JavaScript. So for now, we know how to become a good engineer and we know how to practice JavaScript. Okay, let's go to next. So any resources? Yeah, so I will say there are like so much resources available, but I think uh, these two, these two will do two, three will cover everything basically. So this, uh, you don't need to. Uh, anyone asking anything? No, it's okay. fine. You can keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the resources basically. So like JavaScript.info mostly covers everything basically. So you know like then uh, developer like md and javascript is the second one third is the uh, gigs for gigs and practice you can do at lead code so these are the basic ones and uh, like these are for the beginners basically and also like sometimes like if you don't know some concepts it's also like anyone can go for it so just not for the beginners so javascript.info has multiple things even like experience in use required sometimes and uh, yeah, so I think uh, one uh, which Shishav is sharing content master. So that's a really good resource. I mean, that's a really in-depth basically. So it has like, I think uh, seven, eight, 10 hours long. Yeah, as, as, it's not free ex actually, but if you're already working in the industry and uh, if you can, uh, I will say like, you know, afford it. I think definitely it's a good investment. So people who are already, uh, you know, let's say in the industry want to become more like explorer want to go in more depth so that's actually a good resource frontendmasters.com so okay so the next is basically uh what projects to build using vanilla js of frameworks yeah so that's trust me is the like most confusing things even like i used to got confused in college what to build you know i mean okay i have learned it now what to build i mean you know like sure like everything is built around me you know like what, what should i build i'm not able to find anything new right so you know like the basic very basic thing here is you know we need to just think like like what we are what's our purpose basically you know this purpose is always the important basically in anything like the your goal is important the purpose is important so when we're doing a someone doing a startup their purpose is definitely to you know build something unique basically because that's their us business like doing a business basically starting a business if it's not a unique, they have to something come up with a something unique in products or something, right? So let's say like Facebook is there, like let's say even like TikTok is there. So there are multiple alternatives of TikTok. Like they might be similar, but they are like coming with something might be different. So right. So but their purpose is at least business, right? To earn money. Your purpose is to learn basically. So basic suggestion: build anything you like. Build anything you uh, like see around you, whatever you are like, always like you really love any websites. So 
for example, I used to really, really love Facebook, basically YouTube and all these. And like these days, like really like, you know, uh, looking forward towards Google Doc designs and like Google Sheet designs, basically. So now you say, okay, like, okay, these are very complex ones, how to build it. Yeah. So Facebook is not built in like under one day, one month or one year, right? So it's a big project builds over years, basically. So you have to build the small things, right? Try to build a smaller one. Yeah. Are they too complicated? Yes. But build small features, you know, like what actually meaning, right? Small features like a Facebook is what? Like a profile, a Facebook connection might be a friend, send a friend request. That's it. You know, they can so start with this only. If you can build this, okay, at least it's your working, right? So you have built it, right? Which is already a decently complicated one. So if you build two, three features, these are, these are actually good. Now you can try to, you know, go more basically. Okay, so I think, yeah, someone is also sharing, uh, like, uh, we have front, front end mentor.io home, so they have project ideas, so you can also check that. So, I mean, yeah, so there's also like generally the problem, but anything you can just see around it, build it, and start building very minimalistic thing. Let's say you can build Zoom also. Start with a very minimalistic one, just a direct video call, right? Don't even store it. Everything is generally like free, basically. You can even stream on the same computer, right? to open two on two different, like two different instances or something. So yeah, if you do that, then you can even do that. And sometimes I will tell you, okay. Uh, okay, so we will come to this later on. So anything you come up with, okay, we didn't need backend. We are not backend engineers, like how to build backend, right? You don't need backend, right? You are building front end. So that also means you don't need to build end to end things, right? So you can utilize what you have. So try to you mock basically, you know, once you know how to mock things that also improves one of the other skill, which is like testing, basically in testing, you need to mock many times. So try to go basically, you know, use, you have either a browser DBs you have available, you have local storage, you can try to use it. The question is, remember the question is again, not whether it's the right way or not. You are able to just mock it, right? You are open as in doing some feature testing. It's working as good, right? So that's your aim basically. So in this way, you can actually build small projects, basically, which actually can enhance your skills and you will learn a lot of things, basically. So what to build? Anything you like. Just look around you, look at any websites you daily use, build around it. You want to improve like UI designing skills, like you know, designing a good layout or everything. Just see anything which has like a very decent layout, which you really like. So I think even go to apple.com websites, they have like really like fancy designs. If you just even try to clone them, there's like really like lots of things you will learn basically. Okay. That's great. What about interviews? I can crack it with all the things, right? Uh, so it will be, uh, the answer will be yes and no. So you know, all the things which are required for the interviews, but also no, because a specific set of requirements also needed basically. Right. So I feel interview cracking is, is art basically. Sorry for the slightly like grammatically wrong, but like interview cracking is an art basically. So uh, like I have realized that, you know, like even if you're doing really great work, you are doing everything, you know, everything, but when you go to interviews, they are different. Basically, you know, they are not the same. You know, they are different actually. Okay. So you have to be prepared specific for the interviews basically. So now we are reaching the interview section. Now we have read about how to get into front end, how to study it, what to read, what not to read, how to build projects. We are doing good right now. This can be for the beginners or anyone who wants to start in the front end, become go there, go become good. Now this part is for everyone, like at any stage, basically, whether you are like senior engineer, anyone, anyone like you want to try. So in general, like interview cracking is an art basically. So, yeah. So what are the elements of interviews basically? So in general, uh, like as far as I have seen, these are the general elements, like problem solving is one of the elements. Okay. So problem solving and DSL code generally are same. They can be sometimes different, like generally, but they are the same only. So machine coding is there. So machine coding where you have to develop an app under 45 minutes. Yes, that's, that's trust me. That's like, uh, if you haven't done it, sometimes it becomes tricky and especially at uh, like slightly senior levels, like because under 45 minutes, writing proper code, good quality code and architecture also. 
uh, becomes tricky. Second, then we have front end design. That's like becomes more and more important if you are like interviewing for more senior roles. So if we talk about generally like SD2, SD3, like SD4, then team lead, staff, principal. So these becomes more and more critical basically because the more you grow in your role, the more you grow in your career, the with more seniority, but generally you might be able, like the more focus is actually on the like designing part basically. So, and then managerial rounds basically. So generally these are easy, but they are also kind of important and becomes with senior basically. So because these are not, you know, these are no hard fast tool, like how to clear it. It's like, uh, he'll talk about it. So problem solving. So, uh, and DSL go basically. So problem solving in front end is like, so I will, again, I share right two expected. One is data structure algorithms. Yeah, one might be straightforward questions like data structures, like might be stack based question, queue, trees, might be a graph based question or dynamic programming based questions. So they can be straightforward questions you need to solve. You can solve it using JavaScript. Second is there like, we have problem solving in front end also, like general problems we face in front end. And you might be asked to solve those questions basically. So this is one of the pro this is one of the, uh, basically, uh, like website, big front end dev basically. So, you know, so here you will find lots of problems. Now, if I start, if you just to give you an example, uh, like uh, debounce is one of the problems we generally face uh, in front end, right? So you might be asked to code debounce. Then we have throttling basically. Okay. Or uh, sometimes we might, we might be asked about implementation of any of the polyfills basically. So let's say map polyfill, uh, reduce polyfill. So and it, it can be anything basically like any functions we use basically like, you know, like to ask, we can be asked to implement all the, all of these basically. So that's why like, uh, you know, if you do these things, basically now DSL, I have already talked to you gigs for gigs. If you do you, it has like concepts also it has, uh, you know, it has all the concepts also it has questions also lead codes if you combine these two if you like be able to do good enough i don't think so you need anything else practice lead code is good you have weekly contest also so that's already really great second is uh you know you can practice on lead code medium yeah and never thought about you know like okay like uh, i am not able to do hard questions start with easy if you do easy like really in Every five, 10 minutes, you can do great move to medium. If you can do mediums question, like all the mediums, you really become getting good at it. Yeah, and then go to next, basically, you know, step-by-step -step process. So that will eventually, that will only help you basically like just focus on step-by-step. -step. So, and uh, yeah, JS fundamentals always important, like, because these problem solving skills, like you want to focus on the solving the problem. If you know your fundamentals well, then things becomes relatively easy, basically. JavaScript expertise, yes. If you have like, because every time I go to the interview, for example, you know, every time I give the interviews, basically, like with any of the companies, my focus is because, uh, you know, I just don't want to, you know, like, uh, say I'm overconfident, but you know, like, like today I have the confidence, at least I can say that, you know, if I can build a solution, right? If you are giving me a, if a problem is given to me in the interview, and if I can build a solution first, I know the first, I know the JavaScript. So I know like how to build a solution because like some JavaScript based things, you have to build solution according to it. Like sometimes, you know, sometimes you build a generic solution implemented with any language, but JavaScript, you can, there are some things which if you know about JavaScript, you, you know, that they can be, you know, like you can use it in solving a problem, but my focus is always is on solve a problem. If I know, even I have seven minutes to code it, I can code it even in first time. If I know the solution, basically, because I have confidence on my JavaScript, I know I can code any solution. Yeah. It might be case that I'm not, I might not able to write a good solution, you know, like a very proper structure solution. But if I have the, I can definitely code it at least again, you know, like all these variables, semming modular code, everything is in like my fundamentals. So everything is there. So I can code it. So code is never the worry for me. What is, can I build a solution? If I can build a solution, I can quickly code it, test it and do everything basically. So I don't have never have that tension in my interviews that you no, know, but how to code it, what, what it will be now. Okay. So we will take questions in the last, uh, Arun.
so yeah i think just a little bit remaining then we will do q and a basically machine coding basically so machine coding is basically you know it sometimes it's like 45 minutes one hour basically sometimes it's like a i have seen uh, like it is a very different pattern uh, for different companies so there can be home assignment basically which are given to you to send over a few days so you know like it can be like depend on that basically so depending on the time given to you the problem can be a little bit big or small so if it's a 40 generally like uh, in india basically we have generally like 45 minutes interviews of one hour machine coding interviews so we can be asked to build you know build a tree component basically you know so we have to build a tree component or build a generic form or building some ui layout okay like render a table which can you can sort the columns and all those things basically so you know like things like this basically so that's why like and also like if here actually you know design patterns are more important basically because when i give my first machine coding round i know a design pattern it actually helped me a lot because in machine coding you know how you're structuring your code is important right so because you're writing in vanilla js Java, okay javascript i think uh, those who code in javascript know javascript can be become messy very soon right it can be become very dirty you can, because it's a free flowing language you can write anything so it becomes very messy also so proper structuring is sometimes becomes important until you are using typescript or flow js basically so but yeah so now the question is how to practice it you know like uh, sometimes you know how to practice java like this machine coding so you can like break write your own know, problems and start coding in those basically right under 45 minutes trying to go for the working code and also try to if you know already pre-structure, if you know already design patterns, you can do focus on them basically, modular code and everything. So it will help you a lot basically. So I think a data layer is a very important here. You know how to store the data and everything. If you can manage it very well, if you have practice it, it will actually help you a lot because data management is actually like uh, kind of becomes important here. Learn design patterns. Yeah, so in front end also, we have all the these design patterns basically. So we have event emitter pattern, uh, facade patterns, all these patterns are there. So read it, you might not use it every time, but you know, you should have the knowledge. They become handy, uh, generally comes handy like many times. Managerial. So like the, the thing about managerial is like, you know, you can't do anything. It's just like a simple conversational round basically. Okay. So, you know, like the important is like what you are doing basically, you know, for example, you are doing on a project sometimes like seven people are working and you are doing something. But if, if there, if in interview, it is asked to you, okay, okay, how you are doing this, like what you are doing, you know, explain the structure, which DB you are using, like how you are managing offline, let's say offline things, caching and everything in front end. So it's not like that. Okay. Like I haven't contributed to it. You should, should at least for the project you are working on, you should have the knowledge of all about that project in depth, basically. Okay. So that actually like, you know, means a lot that you are actually curious. You have done that. Uh, and you are always eager to learn basically, you know, so that actually, so details actually are important. Second, what kind of projects you are doing? That's also important. For example, uh, recently I know a friend basically who is also like five year or something, six years. That's also the borderline experience for a E4 and a E5 engineer. So like E5 is like generally like a very big, uh, profile, uh, like in any of the, com any of the like big companies. Uh, like E5 is generally equal to L5, basically L5 in other companies or E5. So Facebook is E, other companies like Google use L basically. So, you know, because he has done really good projects, he has lead a team. So that actually helps him even with the interview for E4, he able to get an E5. So that was actually a really good thing, basically, you know? So that's why like projects, what you're doing in your current role actually helps you a lot. If you are not doing good projects, irrespective of your 10 year of experience, you will not be able to get a senior role in the company because you haven't done those projects and those things, basically. Those, you know, those level thing, basically. Great. Now, how I can uh, have my first job, but wait, how to apply and where? Ah, in the opportunities, is pay good enough? I mean, yes, everything is good, right? Okay, learning front end, cracking interviews, right? Everything is good. But I think these three questions are the, actually the important, right? If these three questions are like, if you don't have the answer of it, there's always the problem at the last step, right? So yeah, let's go one by one. So to apply basically, like to find the opportunities, basically, 
So angel.co, if you are like uh, looking for the startups in your area, in your city, so you can find the startups from more ac across the globe. You can find the US, you can find in Europe, uh, Australia, Africa, everywhere you can find like multiple startups or street like angel.co. You can see the opportunities in that company, try to reach out the star, like, you know, founder, executors. Indeed.com also I have seen really good, like generally like many good uh, profiles, you know, like good job openings there. LinkedIn, I think the ultimate one. So the question is how to use LinkedIn. So I will say, you know, like, uh, Try to find the companies, you know, like there's always news going on, which are the hottest startups, new startups coming up. There's a Y Combinator startups going on. So look at it, then try to find those people on LinkedIn, try to connect with, you know, networking is important. So keep always keep networking and try to connect with them. And the referral is the most important thing if you can get a referral. So I have seen like people give you a referral basically. Sometimes they don't, some like the rate is conversion rate is not might be good. So if you ask for, Try to connect with 20 people, 10 will accept, only two, three might be able to reply and one or two will refer. So yeah, it's a little bit more hard work, but I have seen people doing it. I have like, uh, when first time, I think uh, during my first job or something, I tried for Facebook, someone referred me actually for Facebook, uh, though like I don't know him personally, but he still referred me. So like I have people doing it. So I mean, that's a good thing. And yeah, sometimes like, uh, you know, every city, every country, state has their own communities, basically. So try to go to the events, basically, you know, sometimes the conferences keep happening. So for example, if I talk about India, basically, you know, we have React India happening. And like, we have some uh, like J JavaScript events happening, or uh, like uh, in general, you know, conference happening, basically, backend conference or Docker conference or anything. So if you go to them, basically you get able to chance to meet to the team. You can like talk about it, learn about the teams, which team, what they are doing, what projects they are working on. So, you know, that actually always helps basically. So like networking, again, it comes networking reference and yeah, finding the portals basically. So that always important. And before that, let's assume we have done our, like uh, all the things we have project ready, we have GitHub ready, like we have good contributions of GitHub and uh, there are literally n number of opportunities these days. So like in terms of opportunities available, there are like literally n number of opportunities. <laughs> like I'm just like always thinking like, oh, you know, when I think of something, okay, like uh, is London having enough opportunities? And when I look at it, there are literally n number of opportunities. Yeah, you, you might not find sponsor every time, someone who can sponsor visa. The numbers actually go reduce if you try to look for sponsors, but there are companies who sponsor basically. There's like many startups also do sponsor. So that's not an issue basically. But uh, there are like opportunities are like available. If you go to like Europe, basically, there are like so many opportunities are there. And yeah, US, you know, the Silicon Valley is there. Like you will find like so many opportunities. Then these days, remote opportunities are also there. So in terms of opportunities, I will, I will say like least to worry. So that's, we don't need to worry about it. So yeah, pay, I think is the best pay in the industry, basically. So. Uh, there's hardly any differentiation basically. So like, so far I have seen, uh, like whatever, like, because I do, because, you know, like, I think because when you're applying outside the country, basically, or even in my country, uh, basically, you know, like, uh, you like, uh, basically, you know, you always want to look for the payouts, right? Because you just, because just because it's a good company or going, you don't know, you are not going to that, uh, basically. Right. So. Uh, you know, you want to check the pay also. So pay is in generally good. Europe also like uh, whatever the pay I have seen, I think is the same for like all the roles basically. So there's no much differentiation. In India also, like I think the pay is one of the like, uh, especially if someone from India switching uh, internally. So I think uh, the pay is one of the best in the industry I have seen. So especially like, I think these days, like market is really crazy going on. So yeah, if someone wants to switch best time take the make the best out of it yeah so you guys can connect me on linkedin and twitter basically so on twitter my twitter handle is uh, rahul rana underscore 95 and on linkedin um, yeah you can search this is a url or you can search like you can use this url and or you can search for rahul rana over so i hope it comes on the first page only if you search rahul rana over like i'm the only one rahul rana working in uber so you can find it on the first page so yeah so now we can take the q and a so this is all
so thank you for thank you so much for listening and having patience and being with me so yeah now we can uh, take the questions so let me start with the If you scroll up in the chat, we have a few few questions already. So we should start from the top, right? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I think we already talked about, I think uh, Uzo shared like, uh, there's a frontend mentor.io home where I think you can find project ideas. So that's good. Yes, Arun asked me, I know how long will it take to prepare to crack good product-based companies like Fang, Adobe, Uber, etc. Uh, so as I told you, right, so like, you have you have, now you know the whole process so once you start feeling confident about it uh like you know i will say you know once you start solving medium medium read code question because see like all the big companies there will be dsl go around that's the most tricky one so once you like able to have good problem solving skills i think this is the best time and like remember it's like you will never be able to get like okay everything done it's just that when you are feeling confident you have done enough uh start applying and uh, yeah, I think uh, I will say like another one thing, even if you know everything, you know, if you have known everything, it doesn't mean you will get a job, like you will crack it. Sometimes, you know, like, uh, sometimes, you know, like it happens, basically you even don't know like why you got rejected basically. So last time I know my friend got rejected from Facebook and we even don't know why, like we have done everything good, right? So sometimes like we don't know. So like we have to be a little patient but you just try to analyze, okay, like, uh, what can you improve? But if you do, uh, if you do good, definitely you are like, you can easily get like uh, first, uh, like you can easily crack a uh, company in like two, three interviews, basically. But uh, sometimes it happens, sometimes it's not. So just to share with you, it's a part of the process. So, okay. So I think that answer your question, Arun. Uh, is it worth reading? You don't know, yes. Yes, Prabhat, absolutely. I have uh, read it. Uh, you don't know JS this uh, like concept of this. So if you read all the six books, trust me. And also I have read, I think promises one, you will get a lot of in-depth knowledge basically. And that's actually good, right? I mean, if you read about, if you read those books in one month, you will eventually be like, learn the fundamentals of basically, you know, how they are working and they actually helps you a lot basically. Yeah. So Amal shared uh, eloquent JavaScript. So I think I heard the name, like, I don't know, but yeah, I think that's also, I think a good book. Uh, Malvika asked, how can I get a good, uh, how can I get good at design patterns basically? Okay. So I think, yeah, there's always like, you know, slightly tricky basically, you know, so I think getting good at design patterns basically, you know, so first learn those design patterns and, you know, so try to see what are their applications basically. So whenever you study design patterns, you know, they always give examples basically, you know, so for example, there's an event, event emitter pattern, there's an event emitter basically, right? Or there's facade pattern there, right? So, uh, you know, basically when you go through them, you will see examples basically, you know, uh, this or this observer pattern and all this basically. So, you know, like whenever you read design patterns, you will find examples. Okay, like this is a, like a really good example where it might be used in library. It might be used in, uh, that's, you know, like uh, singularity, basically uh, creating a single object. So you, whatever is there, you no, know, now do research on it, make a doc, small documents over it and try to code it basically, you know, try to build like pure JavaScript focus, uh, you know, like uh, JavaScript focus, basically uh, design it, code it, like use it basically. So but you know how to use it. Practically, I will say, try to read more about, you know, actual source code of all the anything open source is there. I think Redux is there. You can try to see, go inside it and if any design patterns is being used. See, it's a little tricky in the front end. You will not find like everyone is using design patterns, but try to reading already like big uh, open source project you can find because definitely there are some good design patterns. Examples need about them and implementing them. You can actually be, like become good at it. So, and also like every time you start thinking like, uh, how you, can you make something better in your project, in your company, if you are working uh, by using any design pattern. So that's also like make you think, thinking about design patterns. Uh, Lokesh is asking from where we can we learn to make projects in vanilla JavaScript. Uh, okay, so I'm not sure like, uh, so 
i think you know once you learn all these things basically you start like you know uh, start doing it by yourself it's not that tough but still if you have any issue i think there are so many sources available on the youtube basically so if you try to just say like vanilla js project there will some video so you will get a idea and remember it's not like everything you have to be learn once you get a decent idea start building it by yourself because when you start using uh, like you know your own mind with the with like how to make it you will eventually struggle a lot initially but once you get, after like a few days you will get smooth at it basically after one or two projects uh okay uzo asking uh, i usually see one or two back end technologies as a part of the job requirements for front end i notice you didn't apply any back end technology in your map. my question is do you think a developer who is looking to specialize in front end is supposed to learn some back end technologies so i mean yeah so see that's why sometimes it comes sometimes it not but it's generally not a hardcore requirement but like as we know node js is uh, like a node js is a back end language basically so but node js is actually like a front end engineer should also know because uh, we have sometimes you know frameworks and everything because again it's a javascript also so like you know like you should able to like uh, know basics about java node js uh, because like our server side frameworks basically are like they are with node js only so but if except node js they are asking anything uh, like uh, there is like a becomes kind of a little bit full stack because generally they don't expect it basically so but if you you can get the clarity in general basically ask the recruiter if like do they ask you to do any back end code or anything basically so generally it should not be i maximum time i haven't seen it but yeah Philiply, please can we get the roadmap slide again so we don't have exactly have the roadmap uh, basically it's just like javascript fundamentals building projects using vanilla javascript html css uh, the problem solving data structure algorithms and the yeah, uh, react frameworks uh Marivika is asking can you name some companies who are profitable and sponsor visa okay sure so uh, i think the first company that uh, i wish i like is like one of the like you know like we in my college we always used to dream and want to go is booking.com in Amsterdam. So they have offices in across uh, like uh, multiple. Uh, they have uh, like you no know, offices across around the world basically. Definitely sponsor visa, very good company I guess in general. So booking.com is there. Except like like few of my friends also went there. So booking.com is there. Then DataBricks is there in Amsterdam. Uh, Miro is there in Amsterdam. Okay, and uh, Berlin, we have uh, Doodash is there. We have Delivery Hero, Delivery Hero is there. Okay, uh, Klarna is one of the finance companies there. Then in London, we have all the big major companies sponsor their visa there. You know, like Google, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft is there. So, you know, like so many companies are there basically which actually do it. So even like uh, these are transfer wise fintech startup, Clio fintech startup. So no, there are so many companies. So I will say, you know, like if you want to, so my suggestion is here is if you looking for the company who sponsor, you can look for the companies in London, Amsterdam, Berlin, and Dublin is the new hub coming up. I have seen so many people going to Dublin. So Dublin is also a tech hub, basically like a new emerging tech hub. So you can try there basically. So there you can have intercom, uh, intercom companies there, a uh, Stripe is there startup and, and, and trust me, all these companies, they pay at the top end of the, like generally of their places. Okay. So someone is asking web three going, uh, so I haven't get, I want to read about it, but I haven't, uh, like, uh, see too much to read Like I don't have too much knowledge right now about web three uh communicate front end access blockchain protocols uh, i think you can read about it there's nothing wrong you know knowledge is always good basically so you can definitely read about it it's always good to know uh okay so uh, megan is asking what type of project should we build for getting into uh indian product startup no college that just skill based okay so uh okay so i'll tell you see like uh so if like especially if you go going about pure skill based generally like it should not be an issue sometimes like you will might face a little friction but should not be a major issue so again these are the same skills like everywhere for anyone yeah for if more on the college one so i remember i gave see i get my first job which i started with help shift 
out of college basically this off the side did uh, offline like sorry off campus and i have given seven eight interviews and like trust me like whatever has been asked like till that time it has not been asked in my interviews basically so again fundamentals are important basically and like you should know your language like anything framework you know projects you have built basically so and i will say uh, like uh, generally like, keep your fundamentals make sure you know uh, like generally the fundam generally the important things from college students asked is about the database management system dbms generally we have courses on dbms operating system and networking not sure if always asked especially you know, i'm not talking about front end but because you have studied it make sure you have the decent knowledge of it it comes handy basically uh okay daniel is asking could you give in instance in your day to day work where you use knowledge from data structure with them to solve a problem okay so sure. so i think uh, you know like uh, okay so like we have tree basically so we used one of the tree basically and there is like a like a good tree and we have to filter it basically so we have to use a recursion a lot basically that's the first thing basically you know use uh, sorting like you know going through the tree and uh, you know basically uh doing recursion over it so this is like a basic tree and dfs dfs and bfs application second is like we again have a tree structure coming up and uh you can have any node selected and you have to uh find the parent to children that you need to show the path basically so again it's like a dfs problem basically so like these are the two basically and uh, uh basically then uh like i remember in one of my uh, previous companies we used to work so we maintain a queue basically and the, the queue is very important because it's a mailing system and you know like everything that comes in order have to be executed in the order or reverse it whatever because let's say if a folder is deleted you are again creating it and deleting it that order has to be maintained so there we were using queue structure basically so these are the like a basic example of it basically daniel i hope yeah as i told you it's not like every time you might be using it but it's like two problem first you learn the problem solving and second it's needed for the interviews so my approach is if it is asked me in the interviews just do it i mean like it's not like that you can escape it so any yeah, good resource sorry yeah yeah i i just see that we have um, only 2 minutes left um we still okay, have some okay. questions i'm wondering if you would want to take those um offline and we can share that with with the group so we take all the questions and maybe you can provide a written answer and then we can share it with the group is that is that okay yeah absolutely i think so yeah. i guys yeah so i think definitely first provide the feedback i hope you really enjoyed the session so go to menta color and uh, like please provide the feedback about the session it will help uh, like also me improving for any future session i will have or also the menta color team to organize it better for every one of you and uh, yeah that's the first thing and yeah so for any questions i'm like i think i really sorry not able to take uh, all the questions so for all the questions you can reach out me reach out to me on twitter and linkedin basically as you can see so uh, reach out to me there i am happy to answer yeah. just bear with me i mean sometimes like there might be lots of queries but uh, i will try to make sure i reply to everyone so yeah i will like put your questions there and yeah. i am happy to answer any questions you have yeah, yeah. Uh, over to you uh, Yeah thanks thanks a lot for the session bro like it was very informative and it it went also into depth um i'm sure lots of learning from the group um so like rao said um please um fill out the the feedback form and give us some feedback it's going to be super helpful for both rao and for us um and also like go book rao and other mentors on mental color they're here to help you some of you have some specific questions that's why we have mental color so you can ask these questions to your mentors and they're going to guide you individually um and finally we'll try to get some like answers to some of the questions and we can share that somehow um to all of you so thanks a lot for today and uh um yeah we hope to see you in future sessions so go on mentalcolor.org and uh, yeah benefit from everything we're trying to provide to you yeah thank you right. guys uh, thank you everyone and yeah like as uh, uh, he said basically yeah feel free to book sessions i mean we have mentors for all the platform, all the like uh, technologies technology stack basically and so many senior people are there 
feel free to book it. And if you want to like have a conversation with me or you want to book a session, go to Mentakala, feel free to book a session basically. And would love to have a conversation with the enemy. Thank you. All right. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye.